Hello everyone, it's me Nonit and today we will discuss one of the important chapters of physics that is motion. What is motion? Motion occurs when an object changes its position with respect to time. Take an example that is a train and a car. Both train and car are in a motion cause they changes their position with respect to time. There are two types of motions, uniform motion and non-uniform motion. Uniform motion, when a body covers equal distance in equal intervals of time, it is moving with uniform motion. And when a body covers unequal distance in equal intervals of time, it is moving with non-uniform motion. Both distance and time are important in describing motion. Sometimes, you know, motion has occurred even if you didn't see it happen. Such a motion is called relative motion. Let us discuss what relative motion actually is. When two objects are moving in a plane, either in same direction or opposite, each have relative motion with respect to second. For example, a person sitting in a train and watching a tree, in this case, tree is stable but is assumed to be moving but with respect to train. The important term of motion, distance. What is distance? How far an object has moved and it has only magnitude without direction. Another important term of chapter motion is displacement. What is displacement? Displacement is how far and in what direction an object has moved from its start position that is a direct distance between initial and the final points. Speed. What is speed? Speed is the distance an object travels in a given amount of time. The SI unit of speed is meter per second. And speed's formula is distance upon time. Types of speed. There are two types of speed. Constant speed and changing speed. Constant speed. The speed that doesn't change. And the changing speed. It's obvious from the name that it will be changing time to time. Riding a bike for 5 km. Take off and increase speed. Slow down uphill. Speed up downhill. Stop for stop sign. The trip to Q 15 minutes. And average speed is equal to total distance upon total time. I hope the above example will be helpful for you. Velocity. What is velocity? Velocity includes speed and direction. Or you may say velocity is a type of directed speed. For example, a storm is moving at 20 km per hour. Now, how can we say that it is a velocity? Cause even a storm or a wind have or move in one direction and thus leads to velocity. Suppose two trains are going with the same speed in opposite direction. So they are having different velocities. Race car going around an oval track might have constant speed but different velocities at each point. Now you will ask, how it has constant speed but different velocity? You should know it well that speed isn't, a, a, isn't in direction. Whether the direction is different or the same, the speed will remain the same. But if the direction becomes different, the velocity will get zero. So the velocity is said to be the directed speed. Acceleration. Any change in velocity over a period of time is called acceleration. The sign, positive or negative, of it indicates its direction. Positive sign shows the acceleration and negative sign shows the acceleration or retardation. Uniform or constant acceleration equation, that is, A is equal to V upon T. Here A is acceleration and V is velocity and t is time. I hope you can see the image of a car. These images of car are actually equally spaced. 
द कार इज मूविंग विथ कॉन्स्टेंट पॉजिटिव विलोसिटी शोन बाय रेड एरोज मेनटेनिंग द सेम साइज द एक्सीडेशन इक्वल्स टू जीरो बट इमेजेस ऑफ कार बिकम फर्दर अपार्ट एज टाइम इंक्रीजेज विलोसिटी एंड एक्सीडेशन आर इन द सेम डायरेक्शन एक्सीडेशन इज यूनिफॉर्म एरस बिलो द कार मेनटेन द सेम लेंथ विलोसिटी इज इंक्रीजिंग एरस अबव द कार आर गेटिंग लॉन्गर दिस शोज पॉजिटिव एक्सीडेशन एंड पॉजिटिव विलोसिटी एंड इन दिस पिक्चर द इंस्टेंट स्पीड एट पॉइंट ऑफ इक्वल एलिवेशन इज द सेम The velocities are different because they are in opposite free fall and air resistance. And you must know that Galileo Galilei, an Italian physicist and an astronomer, formulated laws of motion for objects in free fall. Free fall. Free fall is another important term of chapter motion. What is free fall? freely falling object is any object moving freely under the influence of gravity alone it does not depend upon the initial motion of the object dropped or released from rest thrown downward thrown upward the acceleration of an object in free fall is directed downward regardless of the initial motion the magnitude of free fall acceleration gravitational acceleration is g is equal to 9.80 meter per second square or you may say 10 meter per second square approximately g decreases with increasing altitude as you know well the g stands for gravitational pull and as uh, as above you will go above the sea level the g will go on to decrease g varies with latitude height and depth from the earth surface 9.80 per meter meter per second square is the average at the earth's surface the italicized g will be used for acceleration due to gravity not to be confused with g for grams because g stands for acceleration due to gravity that is 9.8 meter per second square with negligible air resistance Falling objects can be considered freely falling. Objects of different shapes accelerate differently, as you can see in the picture: a stone versus a feather. Speed both upward and downward. I hope you can see the picture given above. Now let us discuss what is in the picture. The path is symmetrical. You can see the path of the ball, which is a symmetrical path. Acceleration is constant. the magnitude of the velocities is same at equal heights you can see the balls at the same and the equal heights images become closer together as time increases acceleration and velocity are in opposite directions when ball goes upward acceleration is uniform violet arrows maintain the same length as you can see velocity is decreasing in upward motion red arrows are getting shorter positively velocity and negative acceleration velocity becomes zero at maximum height time duration flight in going upward and coming back is always the same you must remember this point now let us come on distance time graph motion can be represented on distance time graph in the distance time graph distance is taken on the y axis and time is taken on the x axis the distance time graph for uniform speed is a straight line this is so because in uniform speed a body covers equal distance in equal intervals of time that is why it is said to be a uniform speed next are equations of motion there are three equations of motion the first equation of motion is as you know acceleration is equal to v minus u upon t where v is equal to the final velocity and u is equal to the initial velocity and t stands for time and in the next step you get acceleration is equal to v minus u upon t where a represents acceleration and when a acceleration gets multiplied by with t it becomes 
a t is equal to v minus u that is acceleration into time is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity and then finally we get the first equation of motion that is initial velocity plus acceleration into time is equal to final velocity i hope you understood it and the second equation of motion as you know average velocity is equal to v plus u upon t upon 2 distance traveled is equal to average velocity plus time so s here represents s here represents distance traveled and s is equal to final velocity plus initial velocity upon 2 multiplied by t so put v is equal to u plus a t as we have derived the first equation we got v is equal to u plus a t so we'll use this equation in the second equation so distance is equal to u plus a t plus u and upon 2 into t s is equal to 2u was there were 2 uh, u in the previous step so 2u plus a t divided by 2 into t the next step is s is equal to 2ut plus a t square divided by 2 and the final step we get the second equation of motion that is distance is equal to initial velocity into time plus 1 by 2 acceleration into times square i hope you understand this well and finally we comes to the third equation of motion third equation of motion is 2as is equal to v square minus u square let us understand its derivation that is how we derive this equation we know that v is equal to u plus a t and v minus u is equal to a t and take v minus u upon a is equal to t we found the value of t here put t is equal to v minus u upon a in equation s is equal to u t plus half a t square that is the second equation of motion so we'll get s is equal to u into v minus u upon a bracket close plus half a into v minus u upon 2 square this v minus u upon 2 is the value of t here and next step we get is Distance is equal to u v minus u square upon a plus half a into v square plus u square minus 2 u v divided by a square. And the next step you will get is s is equal to u v minus u square by a plus half v square into v square plus u square minus 2 u v upon a. s is equal to u v minus u square divided by a plus v square plus u square minus 2 u v divided by 2 a and s is equal to 2 u v minus 2 u square plus v square plus u square minus 2 u v divided by 2 a and distance traveled here we get is equal to final velocity square minus initial velocity square divided by twice of the acceleration and finally we get the third equation of motion that is 2as is equal to v square minus u square or you may say v square is equal to u square plus 2as and the next is uniform circular motion what is uniform circular motion in this kind of motion the object moves on circle with fixed speed but the direction is changed by the time so the velocity of the change is called acceleration or motion acceleration is called centrifugal acceleration it is directed towards the center that is why it is called centrifugal acceleration so here a chapter is ended and i hope you will like it and you understood it well thanks and have a nice day.